a bit nervous. He's not used to the lights. Oh no! <laughs>
And Basil would suggest that a human actor comes on stage and the first thing they have to do is they start to tell you about their character and they start to tell you about their story and their actions. And the first thing the puppet does when it comes on stage is it has to be alive. That's not a given for a puppet. Because if the puppeteers were to jump out of the horse and run away, it would collapse and die. So, and it's possibly this fragility of life that you're all observing. You're all willing him to stay alive. So it's your investment in that fragility that makes people start to care about the puppets. And people often ask me, why do you think people have such an emotional response to War Horse? And I think that perhaps it's because when you put an amazing puppet like that on stage, you're sort of subconsciously saying to the audience, do you want, do you want to play? You know, like when we were children, and we'd have an object between us, and we'd agree that this object was alive, we were playing. And by not leaving the theatre, the audience are subconsciously going, yeah, I'll play. I'm going to play that game with you. And so, whether you realize it or not, we're inviting you to become children or go into a childlike state where you have a greater range, access to a greater range of emotion, where you're in an imaginative state, imaginative state where anything feels possible. That's my theory, I <laughs> think. Um, and then we move on to the hind puppeteer, and the hind puppeteer's got this fantastic emotional indicator, which is the tail, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, the tail is actually made of this amazing substance called Tyvex, sort of half plastic, half paper. Originally we were using this very thin foam, and the tail really needs to move in the air and show us the, the movement of the horse, and this foam moved fantastically. It was highly flammable, so we thought maybe we shouldn't use that. Um, and then the technical task that the hind puppeteer has is, again, he's going to tell us about the weight of the horse, the muscles there, all that huge power in the back legs. So when the horse sets off, he'll dip into those muscles and just tell us that those legs are about ready to move. And the other fantastic technical task he has is he has to maintain the gait of the horse, the walking and the trotting and the galloping patterns. Because the chap in the front, the chap in the, uh, in the heart of the horse, he can't turn around and see what that work is doing because he's strapped in. So the hind puppeteer has to be responsible for maintaining that gait, whether he's walking or trotting or galloping. So if he walks, which is a bit like this, he's in a four pattern. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. And if he shifts up into a trot, one, two, he's in a two pattern. One, two, one, two, one, two. If he shifts up again into a gallop, he's in a faster four pattern. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So you see, he's, he's getting touchy now. Yeah. See, because I'm putting him through his paces. <laughs> so I think we better let him go and have a rest. Thank you very much, Paul. Yeah.